Okay, so today's conversation, I call it the career pioneer. And it's a conversation we can have when you're at that point where you kind of got a blank slate in front of you, you're not sure where to go next. And, um, and it just helps you figure out that driving force and direction, kind of like a pioneer, just figuring out where you're going to settle down. Okay, so I'm just going to share screen because I did make some graphics on this one, because I've been coaching this one forever. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of how it looks right there. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we want to be able to map out your current skills. And then we want to be able to map out everything you like in a job. Okay. And we're going to be gr graphing and plotting different options based on where it fits. Now, here's the thing. If we have something that's very low on your skill set and very low on what you like in a job, then that job option would fit in the dumb category quadrant. Okay. It's like, why? Why are we doing this? <laughs> right. And that would be kind of like a pioneer that's settling down where the, nothing really grows. Like it's just not very good soil and everything else. Okay. Now, if you are <clears throat> considering a job option that's very high on your current skill set, okay, but is very low in what you like in a job, that's a seductive job option. It's seductive. So we might get tricked into it for ego or whatever, but it's not really fulfilling us, even though we're good at it. All right. And then if we take a job that's very low on your current skill set, but it's very high on all the things you like, that's considered a difficult job option. Mm -hmm. But the thing with a difficult job option is that when you add learning and experience, it can transition into becoming an ideal job option. So as our skills go up, it now becomes ideal. So that's like settling in a place that's going to grow into something good eventually. All right. Okay. So that's how this looks. So we're going to go through this conversation. And anyone that's watching the video can follow along. I think this is a really good way to kind of plot out the path forward. All right. So awesome. And this is applied from a coach I had. His name was Greg Winterfield. I had him coach me back in 2003 when I was brand new working. And he was coaching one of my clients who is a super successful CEO. And so I hired, I hired my, my client's C, uh, coach. And, uh, and he kind of did this with me. A, ver a kind of stripped down version of this. I kind of souped it up and made it fancy and everything else. Okay. So question number one, we want to think about awesome. what, what are all your work related skills you've, you've developed and acquired in past jobs. And this can be anything. It can be like writing, photography. Um, it can be like coaching and teaching, like it can be anything. So what are the skills you've developed and acquired in past jobs? Well, I would for sure say like coaching and leading for sure. Okay. Um, just based on the dynamic of the job for sure. Um, I would say in terms of, I don't know if this falls under skills, but even like uh, being a people person, like yeah. communicating. And uh, I would say that's one of like, one of my main uh, skill sets is just being able to like develop a community as well. Yeah. And like kind of, and tailor my approach to whoever I'm speaking to kind of thing. Um, what else? Um, and I would also say like learning wise, like I'm always willing to learn, like wanting to learn too. So if there's something I don't know, I'm usually like outsourcing and asking questions. Mm -hmm. Great. These are all great skills. Now, any specific niche skills you have in there, like you might be like, okay, coaching this subject or this topic. It might be like, okay, coaching uh, nutrition, coaching fitness. You like? I would say like coaching the general population fitness, like very broad, but yeah. Majority of what I do right now too is small group. And that's okay. where like 
focus has been. So I guess that could make that even more specific. Okay, excellent. excellent. Yeah. What are school subjects that you've excelled at in the past? Let's add those to the mix here. What are the specific school subjects? Um, enjoyed or did well in? <laughs> We're going to say excelled at, so did well in. And that just lets us know your natural aptitude yeah. for certain competencies, like whether it's mathematics, whether it's language, you know, whatever it happens to be. Um, for sure, I would say exercise prescription. Mm -hmm. That one was a really solid one. Um, we had a course like in behavior change too. Okay. So I really enjoyed that one. Um, and it, I did well in it too. Um, Great. Like health and wellness, it was all, it was all based on exercise. Like all the courses, like exercise science, everything in university was either pres exercise prescription, health and fitness promotion. Um, what other course did I do good? Anatomy I didn't do good in, but I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cool. Fair. Um, Fair. Oh, okay. like fit things. And what are some hobbies and recreational activities you excel at? Well, I would say for sure, well, like running or like, I'm, I'm, would a hobby be like going to like coffee shops and stuff? Yeah. Like I feel like yeah, I do that a lot. Um, you excel at the coffee shop conversation. I, do. I truly do. There I you thrive go. in that. Um, yeah, I would just say it's, it's exercise, like mainly exercise. I would say running is like my number one. It was always like my number one hobby for sure. And what, what about stuff. travel? Is that one of your things as well? Yeah. 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 I love travel. Okay. We'll put down travel and you excel at it. You don't get lost everywhere. I, I do get lost. Yeah. That's the fun part of travel. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do don't ever take my direction like when I was in a multi post if I said right it was usually left <laughs> okay all right excellent now any other skills or talents you would add to this list and it could be anything it could be like photography it could be like social media skills it could be any type of marketing creative skills could be a musical instrument anything at all let's say like event planning Okay. Um, social media. Yeah, I, I think I do pretty good in social media. Yeah, you do. Like, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah I, I enjoy that. Um, and there was one more I thought about. Um, uh, I lost it. Okay, yeah, I'm good with that. Excellent. So if I take a look at our skill sets here, we got like coaching, general fitness, small group coaching, building community, uh, social yeah. dynamics, willingness to learn, exercise prescription, behavior change, health and wellness, running, going to coffee shop conversations, travel, event planning, social media marketing. So those are those are our skill sets. So that will go on the one axis of this grid. Okay. okay. Now, along the other axis, we're going to get clear on what you like in a job. All right. Mm -hmm. So the first question we're going to go on to is your ideal minimum income. And I'm just going to let you know something about this before we go there is that they've shown that once somebody makes 70,000 a year, and now yeah. the research is a, is a few years old on this. So who knows what it is now with inflation or whatever, but there's no right. real, there's no real increase in happiness after about 70,000 a year in income. So, so yeah, so that's something interesting to think about in terms of like, you know, but then certain people have lifestyles. So there's this, everyone's got a different answer here. But as far as what you like in a job, what do you think is your ideal minimum income per year? 
let's just base it at 60K. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna say 60K. Now, what are the values that are important to your career? Like, is it, a va do you have the value of giving back and being of service? you know, promoting positive lifestyle? Do you have a, a value of generosity of spirit? So what are some of the things that are important to you that you want to live out through your career? I would say like, I enjoy, or one of my values is like enabling others or empowering them, like just to see their potential. So yeah, I guess that's a way of giving back. Like you said, giving back, right? Yeah, yeah. I love that. I think that's awesome. Empowering yeah. others and and uh, helping people build resilience. Yeah, for sure. Another one of yours, I think, too, right? Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Those are good because we want to make sure that whatever you do for a career, ideally, it matches up with the virtues that you are here to be an example of and serve right um for me one of my big things is just making people feel like they matter you know yeah it's simple and stuff but i'm just like i just want strangers to know they matter i just want other people to know they matter because they do and i think we don't hear it enough you know so true so, so true Excellent. um another like value um well, I would say that's my like main, that's my main thing. Like, it doesn't really matter. I used to think it really mattered like what exactly I did, but I, in the grand scheme of things, that's really just what I'm driven by. Excellent. Yeah. Good point. Okay. Now what's the general work amount that you like? Do you need like mm -hmm. part-time work? Do you need to be medium or a high amount or any preference at all? I've realized Oh, I realized that I, I function better with like two part times than I would a full, like one part, one full time. So I guess part time would be the answer to that one. Okay. So low amount of uh, lower part time on the work. This is all ideal. We can, you know, it doesn't mean you're committing to anything. What about location wise, home, close to home, specific geographic area? What would you say here? Uh, close to home's ideal just in terms of time and such yeah yeah okay good what about flexibility of work hours do you need a lot moderate or no flexibility yeah this one's a really big one for me flexibility like i need it for sure okay i just like i like it i guess i got used to the personal training side of things where there's flexibility so i i really enjoy that yeah so do i i just you know, it, I enjoyed a lot too. Not that I have yeah. to have, I've had jobs where, where I haven't, but uh, I do enjoy it now. Now, here's an interesting one. We need to break it down to the type of challenge. Sometimes there's okay. jobs that are physically demanding and challenging, right? Yeah. Like yeah. if you're doing, uh, if you're working, doing the garbage truck, working for the municipality, right? Right. You're tossing the garbage in, like that's physically demanding. You're, you're going to need some core strength and back health for that, right? Yes. Some are very mentally demanding, right? Mentally demanding. Some are very technically demanding, right? And some are very socially demanding. What types of challenge do you prefer most? Mm. When you say mentally demanding, what do you mean? It could be like different types of problem solving, like even mm -hmm. math related equations and stuff like that, that you're trying to figure out and it could be anything along those lines. Yeah. Um, my preferred type of challenge, I think, can it like, can I say like education wise, like just like learning? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would, would say put that under, I'd put that under mental. Yeah, learning. Okay, okay, cool, yeah. Mental. <laughs> okay. And now the next one is preferred job variety. Do you need lots of variety, moderate variety, low variety? Low variety might be like, you know, you're working at a, uh, on an assembly line at a factory and you have one specific type of job you're responsible for and it's the same day in, day out. You know, anytime you're working with different populations, there's always lots of variety. If it's the same group that you're okay. working with, it might be moderate. So let's say moderate. 
variety. Okay. Now the next one is the quality of boss here. This is such a, an interesting one because sometimes I have found that with people I've coached, sometimes their boss is so good and lifts them up so much and makes them a better person so much that the work itself is irrelevant. Yeah. A good boss can really compensate for just what kind of work it is you're doing. It can be some sort of menial physical job, but it doesn't really matter because it's who you're with. Right. And then other times I found that people had like the best job ever, but they just had a boss that was a nightmare and they couldn't stand the job. And they're like, no, it's important to me. I cannot stand having a boss. That's just a selfish infantile tyrant or whatever. Right. So it's like, we, I need, to, we need to get clear on how picky do you need to be on your boss? Um, I would say it's medium priority. Okay. Excellent. Now the next question we're going to get into here is work atmosphere. Do you like to be independent? Do you like to be a member of a team, small company, big company, indoors, outdoors, home? What if you had to, like if a genie came out of a bottle and was just granting you wishes, what would you pick here? Um, I would say small community. Okay, and then growth and development. So this is how much growth and development you have on your job. It sounds like this is a high opportunity need because you are preferring the type of mental learning challenge. Right, but yeah, I would say so. Okay, so we're just going to say high opportunity for growth and development. All right, and then future upside. Just now, future upside is just kind of saying like, is this a company you can grow with, and they're growing, and you can become part of that growth journey and and work your way up as they progress, or you know, is that not really important to you? You just need more of a stepping stone job for now like not really looking at who to commit to long term like the future upside how important is that to you i would say high need okay yeah okay good excellent yeah, i would say responsible like not responsible but have that growth opportunity i feel like that's really big Excellent. So now we have our information. We can always add to it later. Okay. But, but here's the thing. Now we would want to take, I'm going to throw some job options out there and this is going to help you get clarity. Okay. Okay. So let's go into, um, let's go into considering a job for a computer programmer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Computer okay. programmer has nothing that you're good at really. <laughs> like, all of yours are more <laughs> like physical exercise and community-based yeah. skills, nothing you're good at, okay? So it's very low on your current skills. Now, it also pays, uh, you know, 45 grand a year. Uh, you're facing yeah. a computer screen. You're not helping other people see their potential or you're not helping people build resilience. The hours are very strict. Like it's, it's like, you know, Monday to Friday, nine to five. Uh, full-time hours. Okay. Not part-time. It's an hour long away commute. All right. Um, you know, and yeah, there's not, your boss is a, you know, kind of non-factor. They're not really, they're not really inspiring. They're not terrible, but they're not really inspiring. And, and uh, it's a huge community. You'll be a part of a huge company and you'll just be one tiny number. Okay, so if we were to plot that job option, we might say it's low in your skills, right? Is right. It, it, how does it score in terms of what you like in a job? Is that low or low. high? Yeah, low. Okay, so that is a dumb option for you, okay? So you can see any yep. jobs that are low on skills and low on the qualities you like are considered dumb. It's like... A, a pioneer settling in a barren plot of land. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to talk about um, being a group fitness and event coordinator for a company. Okay. 
That's your next option. So um, you're going to have to build the community. You're going to be part of a small team for a company that has set up in some far off country. Okay. And, um, and it's going to involve a little bit of, you know, traveling, a little bit of event planning, yeah. uh, coaching, behavior change, exercise prescription, building community, small group coaching. It's going to involve a lot of those things. However, yeah. it's going to pay you the equivalent of about 35 grand a year. All right. Um, it's going to be from about 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day. Yeah. Right now. Uh, so it's going to be like full time, no flexibility. You're going to get two weeks off a year and that's it. It's going to be uh, very far from home. Like you'll have to take a plane to get there. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Are you paying for this plane ride and, or? Yeah. Yeah. And there's going to be uh, the boss is known to be quite um arrogant and selfish and temperamental okay yeah. and so you know where would we say this is this option is at in regards to your current skills is it low or high in your current high. Skills? okay good so it's up here now what about what you like in a job what you like in a job when we consider like the hours, the flexibility, the type of boss, the annual income, is it low or high in what you like in a job? Low. Okay. So that would be a seductive job choice. You might be really good at it, but you're compromising a lot of things that are very important to you for job fulfillment. This is yeah. where a lot of people get confused. They fall into that trap, right? So it's like a, it's like a, a scenic plot of land but the land doesn't produce enough to keep you happy it's a good ego boost but it comes with compromise got it that makes sense that does yeah all right now let's consider a, another type of job do you have any other actually do you have any other options that you're just thinking about that are floating around out there that we can start to plot well um like working in like a wellness center like as like let's say a physiotherapy assistant or whatnot that's usually the title it goes under okay good so we'll say like uh an assistant in a therapy clinic yeah okay good so um thinking about the types of things you'd be doing right you'd be coaching uh you'd be giving some exercise prescription There'd probably right. be a lot of willingness to learn because you'd have somebody mentoring you and coaching you. Yeah. There's a lot of social dynamics. They might want you involved building some sort of community events, like maybe on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, getting people involved, uh, getting them together for whether it was, uh, you know, physical or mental resilience or empowerment sessions, maybe. Um Maybe you lead a running group in the community that meets up at the clinic. Who knows? So, yeah. Um, but the point is, if you're, a, if you're an assistant, then it's on them to kind of coach and teach you and you just have to learn, right? Right. So where would we score that for skills you're good at? High well, I or would, low? I would say high. Yeah, I would say high, sure. For sure. Okay, now here's where it can get tricky. Now we have to think about what you like in a job. Because mm -hmm. it could go a lot of different ways here. Right? It could go a lot of different ways. All right, so let's say you're going to make uh, 60k a year. Let's say that this facility is, you know, about seven minutes down the road. Okay. And they've kind of given you, they kind of want you there six hours a day, maybe six hours in the, in the morning or whatever. And, um, but the company's growing. They're like, Hey, we're opening up a couple different locations, but we're planning on in the next five years, we're going to be opening up 15 locations across Ontario. Right. 
Uh, and we're going to want you to learn different skills as you do, because we might have you training the other assistants down the road. We might have you running educational seminars for the company, or as the company grows, we might have you organizing some events for everybody, maybe even some retreats. We might get you to plan. We'll go, we'll all travel to some, you know, cabin resort and do some outdoor retreats with education and team building and stuff. And we, we think you might be a good candidate to head that up. Um, and the boss is inspiring. The boss is, uh, you know, always one of these people who sees the best in you, right? And, uh, and they're always coaching you and kind of helping nurture your development. And they're, they have very high values as well. They're very much all about fo being focused on the welfare of other people. And they look at their leadership as a, a privilege, you know, and an opportunity to serve rather than something that's an entitlement and a trumpet call to their own self-importance as other bosses maybe that you've had in the past, right? So if that's the situation, where would this job fit? Well, it would be, I guess, in the ideal, because um, it's high in what I like in a job and it's also high in current skill set. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So that's an ideal job option. It's kind of exciting. It's kind of yeah. like, we should settle down here. Now, it's also possible and... And it's also possible that something like that might not exist right now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's possible that, you know, you might have a job. Let's say you might have a job that pays, let's say, 65K a year. Okay. And it's going to be sort of like an outdoor education instructor, like outdoor physical recreation instructor. Yeah. And it's going to have a lot to do with coaching on sustainability and environmental health and interacting with nature. Right. And it's going to be like part-time, you know, it's going to be like a lot of times it's just going to be events and weekends and, and uh, pretty flexible lots of mental learning involved, okay? Um, because you're gonna have to learn all these skills. Uh, the company is growing, sort of they're, they're creating these outdoor experiences and stuff where people connect with nature and you know learn to uh, just um, live in harmony with nature simply. Uh, simply. And uh, there's a fair amount of variety because you're gonna be in a bunch of different natural settings and. Um, the boss is great and you're part of a small community of people that are doing this with, but it's completely new to you. Like yeah. you, you didn't go to school for anything related to the environment or anything right. like that and nature. And you, I don't even know if you know how to set up a tent or, or to put it back in the bag when it's done. Have you ever noticed <laughs> that it's easy to take a tent out, but you try to put a tent back in the tent bag and it's like, how did this thing even fit in here? Right. It never same yeah it, for me at least <laughs> and, and like portaging and canoeing and these are all different physical skills that you might not have right, right. you might have to do some different uh camping excursions as a part of this and you're running different uh, excursions but it's all kind of new okay yeah where would that option fit i guess something difficult because it's low in my current skill set and high in what I like in a job. Yeah. Yeah. So that might be in the difficult category. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, but as you get better, it could become an ideal job. Right. Right. And so that's why we want to keep an eye out for things like that, because, you know, it's like, as you develop, and you develop your competency, this becomes an ideal job. Like, you know, three or four years from now, you could just be loving this. You could be like, oh my gosh, I love this. I get to, I get to be outside. I'm meeting with groups of people, you know, who are, you know, from all over the place and they just want like a Canadian wilderness experience or something. And I'm coaching them and we're being physically active and we're traveling through things and we're learning how to live off the land or whatever, right? So- yeah. That that's kind of a that's a difficult job option, which is important to consider as well. Right? Like 
because right. a lot of it is what you like in a job. You're empowering people to see their potential to thrive when the circumstances might be discouraging or new, right? You're helping them build resilience, right? By right. running excursions. So this is showing some of the different dynamics of how we can kind of um, compare and contrast our current skill set with what we like in a job, right? right? So an example of that was one time I took somebody through this and they really liked like cooking and they really liked uh, photography and art. And what we did was we realized that one of the ideal job options for them, and they really liked entrepreneurship. We realized mm -hmm. that one of the ideal op job options for them might be to open up their own little restaurant and just showcase all of their art and photography, right? Like, wow. once, yeah. once they started to think about that, they got really excited. They're like, that's something I'm going to work towards now. I'd that's love to be able to do that. But doing this helped them to see those connections. Right. Yeah. And if they didn't have, uh, if they didn't have the qualities that would make them good for entrepreneurship, we wouldn't have said that. We would have been like, oh, no. This is not going to be, this is, this is going to be a real challenge for you. Like it's going to be very difficult. Right. So. I, and this, this worksheet's good too, because I think when it's down on paper or if it's like just in your head and you don't articulate it, it's harder to draw those connections. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So it helps us get clear on it. So we want to think, you know, if, if you're currently in a dumb or seductive job, why? Right. Yeah. We want to know about that. And perhaps it's like, you know, fear of debt, fear of failure. Perhaps it's like, especially with seductive job options, fear of failure. Perhaps it's just a pandemic transition thing. And we're just doing something to make ends meet. Who knows, right? Right. We also want to consider, you know, what fields of work are you interested in? Here's a bunch to consider. Okay. So we want to consider stuff like the entertainment industry, right? Like maybe that's a a field to consider, you know, maybe the, the food and beverage industry is a field to consider, you know, um, maybe self-development is a field to consider travel industry, right? Okay? The training industry, like you might be, uh, want to consider being a corporate trainer where you get yeah. to travel and you get to meet with teams from different companies and coach them through, different resilience techniques, both mentally and physically. And, you know, maybe you get them outside of their comfort zone, doing some early morning runs and stuff like that. Maybe yeah. the, the charity, maybe working for a charity or a humanitarian industry, maybe mm -hmm. sports and recreation. Um, hospice, you know, working with people that are transitioning at the end of their life, maybe an environmental company, a tech company, if that excites you politics, coaching, songwriting, and performance, video production. These are all things to consider. So okay. I consider from a whole list of, of those types of things, right? Like you might find doing video production for a marketing company, you know, and you're, you're running small groups and, you know, maybe doing social media is one of your skills, but it right now you're not very high on many of the skills needed but it's a really yeah. fun company. It pays well. And it's, uh, it, you know, you might find that that could be a difficult job option that could become ideal. We don't know. Right. Okay. So there's so many, there's so many underdeveloped sides of ourselves, right? Yeah. We all have so much more potential than we can actualize in this lifetime. We're not limited by our potential. We're limited by our time to develop that infinite potential. Right. Because you could have many flourishing careers in many of these different jobs and industries, but you're just only limited by your time. Right. True. So, so, what I would say is figure out those industries. So, if you were to think about any of those industries I mentioned, did anything stick out for you that's kind of interesting or intriguing at all? Well, I would say, like the, you said food and beverage industry. I've always like, kind of considered like even getting into like the coffee shops and things like that or having because you could you could have a local coffee shop kind of run these health and wellness events mm -hmm. um, even like corporate training so being responsible for like um 
the health and wellness of like employees and making sure that there's like resources available. Like I've considered that as well. Yeah, nice. Um, but another thing that's always kind of crossed my mind, cause I do like travel and I do the health and wellness side of things and sustainability is always like a big one for me, but even just like running retreats or being like a part of, uh, some of those, I think that would be so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So at this point, yeah. you, uh, and those are all great options to consider. And, yeah. uh, you know, and it's really funny cause I remember like my, someone I know, they were really yeah. into music and they were really into travel and they ended up getting a job with a company where they got to oversee bringing in famous musicians to poor countries to help these poor communities. So they would travel to these poor countries, bring famous musicians, and then just sing and dance with these like communities of people. Oh, and these impoverished parts of the world and it was just like wow this is such a crazy combination of of these skills you have yeah and uh and such an adventurous type of job right i love that yeah now here's what i would ask next thinking of some of those industries you know do you know yes or no you know do you know people that work within those industries and is it possible you can reach out to them just to understand more yes it's, I definitely think it's possible for sure. I do know I, some people in each of those industries. So I'd say that's now your driving force and direction is just to seek first to understand, just to understand a little bit more about people that are in there. Hey, can you tell me a little bit about this? You know, what do you like about this kind of job and work? And, you know, if I was to consider it at some point, where would I begin and what would I need to do to prepare myself, you know, and just get some intel. Okay. Right. And what, what are the types of positions in those fields? You know, uh, could you let me know, like maybe there's a manager position, a director, an entrepreneur, a service technician, a consultant, like what are the different positions available? Right. And maybe are there, are there any options available right now that might be a good fit for me? Or maybe I can make myself a good fit, or maybe I can volunteer or job shadow and get some experience. You know, I'm willing to just get everybody coffees. I like being in coffee shops. I'll just get people coffees all day long. <laughs> uh, you know, I'd be good. I'd be good at that. It was, it was really funny because I remember one time um, someone I know was interested in music production. Yeah. And then someone else I know what, was working in that industry. And they, the, the one working in the industry said this don't bother paying for an education in this. What you should do is give your money to people at a studio, tell them you will give them money and buy them coffees and have them teach you on the front lines how to do this job in the real world. Wow. And it was like, that's profound. Because if that's the way the world works, if what they're teaching you in school doesn't transition into real life and isn't keeping current with the times, Mm -hmm. And if you were to show up and just say, I was going to pay X many thousand for, uh, you know, a college degree in this, but instead I want to pay you just to be able to let, have me hang out and just coach me and show me the ropes. Think about what somebody's going to think about who they're going to want to hire next when there's yeah. an opportunity. Are they going to want to yeah. hire somebody who paid for the cookie cutter education? Or are they going to want to hire somebody that had that initiative and that courage and that ingenuity in and creativity to be able to uh, make a path for themselves, right? That's so awesome. Yeah, so we wanna be able to think about, we wanna be able to make a plan to just reach out to some of those people and get some. And then one of the things you wanna get from them is you wanna know like, what skills can I develop? What wisdom and experience can I gain that might help me in this area? I would mm -hmm. ask them that question. I'd make that one of the key questions. Like, what do I need to do? They might be like, hey, look, you should just take a small course on like design thinking, right? Because this is a big subject we talk, of, talk about. Or maybe sign up for Toastmasters and get practice at public speaking because you're going to be speaking a lot. And you're going to be speaking alongside some people who are pretty good at this. You've been doing it for a long time, right? Or they might say, we want you to take a course specific to uh, the TikTok platform 
and social media, because that's where we're, we're moving into that space next. We need somebody who's a specialist at that platform, or maybe a YouTube specialist. Like they might be able to give you some specific direction yeah. in terms of how you can sort of mold your development. You know, and we also might want to research, you know, what are the potentially ideal jobs at the moment? You know, like if, if you were really into snowboarding and teaching and stuff, you might be like, look, I could be a snowboard instructor in Italy or something or Germany. <laughs> like maybe that's a really cool job because I like travel and I want to just have that adventurous experience. Maybe I can look that up, right? Or maybe there's a job working as an assistant for a pro sports team somewhere, right? A training assistant and stuff. Like you can start to research different organizations and, and just see what's out there. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So another thing, here's a question that scares most people. Okay. <laughs> so buckle your seatbelt. All right. But is it possible you can create an ideal job opportunity or career? Of course. And if so, how might you do that? Like, it, let's say you're on some sort of a game show or reality show, and they're like, okay, Monica, we figured out your dream job. Now you have to create it. You have one week to do it. Where would you begin? Well, I would definitely say, like, network wise, like outsourcing. Let's say, for example, I'll give an example. If I could think out off the top of my head of like, let's say I wanted to build retreats, I would reach, I would start by reaching out to people who already do that. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. You can start by reaching out and maybe begin your learning journey. Yeah. You know, perfect. Yeah. And you could also think about, you know, some questions to think about if you're, if you're struggling with this, some good prompter questions could be like, you know, if you had only a few months to live, how would you use the time? You know, if yeah. a significant sum of money came your way, what kind of, how would you spend it? What work would you do? Mm. yeah you know you might decide that you just want to be a coffee shop coach <laughs> <laughs> yep you're like all i do is i hang out in coffee shops people come in they meet me there i sit by the fireplace my espresso and then just <laughs> go into resilience conversation i've done that by the way i've done coffee shop coaching um prior to all lockdowns and everything else and loved it it was always great. Like, it's just a very enriching experience and memorable, right? Yeah. Like, sounds... okay, if I'm doing mental toughness or life coaching with somebody, I'll meet with them in a coffee shop. You know, if it's not provided, it's not too heavy of a subject, right? Right. Then no. it's, a, it's a good, fun atmosphere to be in. And it doesn't feel like work at all. It just feels like hanging out. Yeah. You know, another thing you could think about is this. Okay. First of all, how can you create an ideal job option? How could you do this to benefit others so they'd want to invest in it? So you might want to think about creating some sort of a movement, a paradigm shift, or some sort of lucrative business model. You might be like, okay, well, right now, humanity is really divided. So we want to put together some sort of a retreat that helps people connect better with their bodies and positive thinking, but more importantly, creates that sense of common humanity. That we're like a one world family. Like that's the idea behind these retreats. It's like a one world family. We're going to bring in people from all different countries and stuff like that. We're all going to hang out at these cabins in the woods and we're going to learn survival skills. And we're going to hang out together and share stories around the campfire. And we feel like, and then everyone goes back to their part of the world. But now they feel that sense of connection and commonality with people from all over the world. And that's a, a, a shift that needs to happen for us to be in greater harmony on this spaceship we call Earth right? I love it. Yeah. So we might think about, you know, how can we create some sort of compelling purpose behind this? Yeah. You know, that might leave a legacy and we might be like, and we may be like, and you have the opportunity to make this happen because we need somebody like you to invest in this and get involved. We need your coaching, your guidance, your commitment, and any of the financial resources you have to get the ball rolling and connections. And this is a wise and like, this is a worthy cause. And yeah. we're sure you can agree why, or it might be like, Hey, you know, 
Um, right now, we've got a, a terrible situation going on in the world with just we're treating uh, wildlife and the natural environment as something we can just use and abuse. And we want to culture the next generation to really respect and love nature. And so we want to bring in like young people from all over the world. We want to bring them out into, you know, out into natural settings and get them to like bond and connect with some of the wild animals and nature and have these really touching experiences. And we want to just coach people on how to fall in love with nature. And that's what we want to do. And we're going to bring people together on retreats just to fall in love with nature. Because then when they're later on, when they're sitting at an executive meeting and stuff, and they're making decisions that require profit and nature, they will value nature higher. Because that's what we want to give people those reference experiences. So we can actually protect and take better care and be a better steward of this earth. And we think retreat experiences are the way to do that. And to create yeah. that shift in priorities, right? So you might want to, that could be um, hmm. some things to think about, right? I'm just making stuff up off the top of my head, but no. kind of making stuff up that's that uh, you know could create that that shift in consciousness could be that that hook for something like this. It could get other people to want to participate in it, right? right? And then we want to think about you know how could you do it to reach a multitude of people. You know, could you have some sort of internet group that gets people started and networked and, you know, an internet support group and training and development programs and maybe train other people to do this, to set up these experiences and you create a big team of people somehow and you're just kind of like the mothership, but other people are starting these up in other countries, right? Like, and then we want to ask, you know, how can you do it intelligently yeah. so that it's profitable? Because at some point you have to make money and to be able to do it long term, right? Assuming. Exactly. So, okay. um, yeah, so that's, that's anyway how we want to think about, you know, putting together some action steps to move forward is what we want to think okay. about today. And then there's actually like this really cool process. We can go into it another time. But it's basically how you score your different options with a number, okay? And it's basically like this. It is basically that we would take a decision statement, okay? We're using a logic-driven process to compare options. We could take a decision statement. I got to decide what job to choose next, all right? We might have three options and we got to compare them because we don't really know what one we want so we're going to score each objective one to ten so annual salary of 70k that's a 10 out of 10 that has to happen okay job variety is an eight out of ten it's like we really kind of like it but we're willing to give some quality of boss is a seven out of ten priority location we score as a five out of ten future upside is a four out of ten okay so you see what i did there yeah the objective, we're, we're giving each objective a score. And then we rate each one. So let's say a chiropractor at Crack House Cairo Clinic, whatever, right? It pays over 70K. So we give it a 10 there, okay? It's a seven out of 10 on job variety. Like you have some repeat clients, some new ones. It's a five out of 10 on quality of boss, okay? It's a six out of 10 on location. Let's say it's like, you know, 20 minutes away. A uh, future upside is a seven out of 10. Like the company's got uh, a couple locations. They might expand to like three or four more in the next eight to 10 years. So we multiply it by our scores here that we have evaluated and we get a total score of 249, right? But we're doing it in a very transparent, clear, logic-driven way. Right. All right. Well, let's say you compare that to being, you know, a massage therapist at Piggly Wiggly's, which I believe is a grocery store or something. Anyway, no way. Sounds ridiculous, but um, uh, let's say it's only going to pay like you know thirty five k. So we give it a five out of ten. Yeah. On on salary that gives it fifty points. Ten times five. Job variety is a seven out of ten again. Like some repeat, some new. Eight times seven is fifty six. Right. The boss is amazing. Like the boss is like the funniest, smartest, nicest person ever. So we're going to give the boss a 10 out of 10. So 
quality of boss is worth seven. So seven times 10 equals 70 points on that. Location is like 10 minutes away, very close. So we're gonna give it an eight out of 10 for location. So five times eight is 40. Future upside is meh, might be a little bit, not really likely. The company's been around a long time, right? So four times 60 equals 240. So you see how we take different job options and we can kind of just take what are our ask list and how important is each, each ask and then score each of the options by it. Yeah. That can be a good like logic driven process for this. Okay. Okay. So you can kind of fill this out on the back. You can kind of put what are your wants? How important is that want? And where does this option fit? And you can fill something like that out. Cool. Right? And compare different options when it gets to that point. You know, because I think a lot of times with career, it's kind of like aiming a telescope into outer space, like a shift of one millimeter can drastically by light years change the end destination for your soul's progress and everything else, right? Like it's like, so we want to, you know, that, you know, if you're watching this video or anyone who's considering this stuff, like it's a very important thing to take serious is where you're going to journey next. Because wherever you journey, there's going to be different life lessons and experiences for you. So we want to make sure that we're doing what's best for you at this moment. And this is a very clear way to do it. Career pioneer. Love it. So, um, yeah, so we can take, and I think when, when my coach, Greg, back in 2003 taught me this, he just kind of drew it in pen and kept it simple. And he's like, just do this. And I was like, okay. And then I came up with all these questions and charts and everything over the 19 years since I learned this, but I've always used it, right? It's a very valuable skill. So now I'm passing it on to you. But, um, but yeah, I found it, a lot of people have got a lot of good clarity on it. They're like, okay, now I know where to focus. Now I know where as a pioneer, I'm going to try settling in this territory here. I'm going to get some information before I settle here. Talk to these people who have settled here see what I need to do to prepare myself. And that can give us sort of that driving force. I love that. Okay, key takeaways from today's conversation. Well, I would say the main takeaway is just like getting clear on like what's, what's like your, um, like your main, not, not priorities, what's the right word? Like what's important to you? In your job, like considering things like location and and commitment in terms of like how much time or if part time works for you or full time, like just getting clear on those variables of the career um, and which ones kind of are the most important. But even in terms of the quadrants, like you know, uh, having an understanding of like what your skill set is and ranking it on that scale versus like how attractive the job is, I think is important too, because I know I've been in the shoes before where it's like, it's really high on, let's say, being attractive, but it's low on my skill set. And I quickly realized I'm like, this isn't going to work in terms of being fulfilled, right? Like, but I didn't take the, I didn't take the extra time to really consider it and, and, and map this out and, and think about it. It was kind of like more on impulse. So mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, kind of, yeah. sometimes unless you map it out, you can get deceived. And I know of one example of there was a, a place that was had these had a great facility. OK, they had like a poutine bar. They had a mini putting course. They had all this the gym. They had everything. So when they take you through a tour, it looks so attractive. However, nobody really takes advantage of the facility because they work you to the bone. It's a sales uh. position and you're doing calls nonstop and they want to have food there only because they don't want you going home because it's a very commission based. So they want you there for 12 hours a day. So when you go through for your job interview, you think what you guys got a mini putting course, you got all this, you got all this free food for us and everything else, but you're going to work me to the bone. Like what? Right. So yeah. what I had heard was that it was um, a lot of people were very disillusioned once they started the job because they were looking at a few frills they like with the job, but they were overlooking like the 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 demand, the job demands and the nature of the work. They kind of got um, 
they kind of got blindsided and they overlooked some of those greater realities of the job environment, right? Yeah. So that can be an experience we don't have to learn the hard way if we yeah. can kind of plan it out. Yeah, so you're right. That's this is all about, this is a process to go through to get clarity and direction for career priorities, right? Yes. It's a very clear process. Perfect. Excellent. So that's something to just sit down and map that out and then you can plan your next steps. I think you've got some next steps, right? You're going to reach out to some of the people in those industries and ask some questions and do some research and be able to figure out your path forward next, right? Yeah. And then, uh, and then we've got a list of all the things that, you know, all the things you're good at, all the things you like. So you can always add to that list. Okay. But then, you know, once you write it in, then, um, then at least you've got that clarity. Yeah. Once you've got it typed up. I'm going to just save that. Yeah. Perfect. Just save that. And, uh, yeah. So thanks for being a part of this conversation for anyone out there that might be watching this and might need this right now. Uh, we're doing this obviously just as a gesture of, of love and care for strangers as part of the whole one world family idea, you know, yep. it's just that, that commonality of the human experience and helping each other out as best we can. And we're here just to be a friend to everybody. Right. So got it. we're all in this together, just figuring out how to make the best of this human experience. Let's do go team on three and then we're out. Okay, ready? Okay, thank you. Here we go. One, <laughs> two, three, go team. Go. Thanks, Brendan. All right, take care.